Do you want to win games that seem unwinnable? Are you tired of relying on teammates to carry you? Then you have come to the right place. We are starting off with rotation, since that's the first thing that separates an inexperienced jungler from a high-level jungler. You only want to contest the litho if you are starting red buff and the litho is red side, otherwise it will slow down your rotation. How do you know which buff to start? Usually you always want to start with the buff on the opposite side of gold lane, that way you can easily focus on the enemy marksman. Some jumblers are mana dependent and need to start the blue buff. No mana. You have no mana, bitch. You have no mana! Or maybe the enemy has a Franco or Hilda and you want to start the red buff to avoid an early invade. This is the rotation I recommend for solo queue. Start the blue, straight to red buff, take the creep above the red buff and the other creep below turtle. Then you should be level 4 and ready to gank. Start red, take the creep above the red buff and contest the litho. Remember if your tank and mage isn't supporting contesting litho, you might just want to go straight to blue, then you take the creep above blue, maybe the gold crap and then you're all set. In the early game your first mission is getting level 4, that's also why you should not fight before level 4 unless you see a guaranteed kill. Mia tried to delay my level 4 so I had to take the creep, if I don't get 4 I can't gank her lane. Here it didn't make sense for me to help Harley cause I wouldn't have won the fight or saved him and the enemy tank could be camping. In the first 5 minutes, minion gold is reduced by 70% for the jungler. So you shouldn't clear minions unless you are defending a tower or want to push an enemy tower. In the early game speed is everything, you don't want to waste any time. That's also why you never stay in a lane. Secure the kill, push the tower and move on. It's very important that you don't die in the early game. Kill the enemy marksman if you have the opportunity, but pay attention to a possible counter gank. Oftentimes the enemy jungler will gank the same lane as you. Pull the turtle to your side, that way you'll be less exposed to an ambush. Keep your distance from the enemy tank or anyone else who has a stun when contesting turtle and try to combine a skill with your retribution. The higher the level, the more damage your retribution will deal, that's why it's important to stay ahead even when your team is behind. Maybe you notice that sometimes your retribution damage is higher than what you see on the display. That's because junglers has burned damage. Whatever you hit in the jungle will be affected by burn instantly, if it's a creep, a buff, turtle, or lord. The burn damage is HP based, so if you're playing a tank jungler it could be 500 extra, and if you play assassin it would scale from 100 to 300. So if you're trying to steal an objective, you will have the advantage against the enemy jungler since his burn already begun, but your retribution will have that instant burn. As long as it's your first time hitting it, or if you hit it then walk away and come back, the burn will reset. You shouldn't force the turtle if you have low HP and the team isn't near you already. You can always see if enemy jungler started blue or red by checking their gold. Blue buff gives 126 gold while red buff only gives 120 gold. Zilong has the same gold as me, that means he started blue buff. There's a big chance he will go for the litho after blue, that gives me plenty of time to invade. After invading his red buff, I'm gonna hurry to my own red buff so he doesn't steal it. That's why I'm saving my retribution. Here I can see the enemy tank is top and the mage is clearing mid. I know Ling pulled the blue buff into the bush. This gives me enough information to make a successful invade. In this clip, I just saw Hayabusa on his red side, so I thought he would gank Beatrix or go for Turtle. But little did I know he was watching me from the bush. Estus were low HP, but I didn't have mana. Instead, I went for Haya's blue. And I also got the Turtle. So even though he was the one starting the invade, I won the trade, because he was wasting time. If the enemy are pulling your buff into the bush and your team isn't helping, it's usually better to just give the buff. 
Here I was lucky that I still got it with my first skill, but if I went into the bush I would have been dead for sure since there were three people in there. I didn't use retribution on Turtle because Mardis is dead so this is the perfect time for me to invade. But instead of just invading the buff, killing him in the process will give a bigger advantage. I waited for him to finish his second skill so he didn't have any escape. Okay. Hacks, bro. Freaking hacks. It Reported. Is. Woo! Jungling is essentially a numbers game. Don't get mad if you get invaded. Instead, find another way to get the gold back. Here are some examples of a good trade. I saw that Sun was doing my red buff, so I went straight on the turtle. I also wanted to take his red buff, but Kufr knew what I was up to. The enemy took the turtle quick and we traded with a gold lane tower. The turtle was up, but there was too much going on in the bot lane, so I prioritized ganking. Okay. Never let your guards down. Everyone will focus you, so make sure you're always ready, even when you're not. Pay attention to enemy spells so you don't get surprised by a petrify, execute, or vengeance. Hey bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! Bro, what the hell, bro? Say hello to my little friend! I saw the whole team was in bot, so I knew I could tower dive the mage without getting punished. I wanted to invade their red buff. But then I saw they were all in bot lane. I cleared mid because I thought they might walk through their jungle to defend the mid tower. I could have killed Nana too, but Nathan might have killed me and Lord was about to spawn. They wanted to push the mid tower so I waited in this bush to ambush them. Sometimes you can use your teammates as bait. If you're playing an assassin, you always want to focus the squishy backline. If the whole team is clumped up together, try to wait until the enemy use their CC skills. That way you can just clean up and turn the fight around. Remember, you are playing a carry role. Even if your team is losing the fight, you can still turn it around, as long as you keep up in gold. After winning a fight, you always want to look for objectives. Turtle, Lord, Towers, or even a buff will matter. If the enemy is doing the Lord and your team is not close by, or you are behind in gold, it's sometimes better to give them the Lord. But if you focus on the enemy, you can still turn it around. Maybe they got the Lord, but since they all died, we won the trade. This game we were behind a lot, but I saw the enemy were fighting top lane, so I went for a risky play on the Lord. Because of that we ended up making a comeback. 
If you have a big lead around the 7 minute and your team wants to do the turtle, ask them to wait since the Lord spawns at 8 minutes. The same goes if you have a big lead and the team wants to do Lord around 11 minutes, then it's better to wait for the enhanced Lord at minute 12. If you are behind in gold and there is no way you are gonna kill the enemy alone, don't try. Then it's better to farm, split push, or regroup with the mage and roamer. You should always build depending on the enemy lineup, even though some junglers have one build that works the best. Sometimes you want to switch it up. Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. You should never be surprised while jungling, every move is a calculated risk. If something happens that you didn't expect, learn from it, but never blame others. You can't control your team in solo queue, you can only control yourself. 